have a fever. Um, so first of all, when you see the words average value, you have to know this formula. We're going to have a quiz on Monday, um, and definitely average value is going to be on there. Average value is when you take the average of the interval, so 1 over v minus a times the actual integral. And when we did this before yesterday, you'd use your calculator because we didn't have, like, we didn't know how to do it without a calculator. But now we could do this problem. We could say 1 over the interval from 2e minus e from e to 2e of 1 over x dx. And now I could make you do this without a calculator um, because we now know how to find the exact answer. And this is what we learned, Sean. It's all about little f's and capital f's, and you weren't even here to yell at me about it. e minus e is 1 over e. And then what we learned yesterday is we're going to take the integral of this, or the antiderivative, and what is the antiderivative of 1 over x? ln of x, because the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So I could say that this is ln of x, and really you should put absolute value bars around this. Sometimes we get lazy and we don't, because if the bounds are both positive, it's not going to affect it if you don't put absolute value bars around it. And then we're going to evaluate that from e to 2e. And I'm going to say that that is ln of 2e minus ln of e. I kind of broke this up with you yesterday, but really we could just put this together, I guess. But um, they like to give you ln and e stuff a lot on the AP exam without a calculator, which means they want you to remember all those properties. And we have some options here. One option is, do you remember what you can do with subtraction of ln? Subtraction goes to division. You also could do it, multiplication breaks up to addition. All of those are options. Yesterday with Katie, I broke it up as addition. But could I also say this is the same as saying ln of 2e over e, because subtraction goes to division, one of those properties that we tend to forget. And do you agree that um, these would just cancel? And I would get that that's just ln of 2 over e. With your calculator, even if you use that math 9 button, it's going to give you a decimal. Whereas we get, uh, lovely. Yes. Because ln of 2 is a decimal and e is a decimal. I'm just saying I think this is a better answer than the calculator answer. That's all I'm saying. Or if I said do this without a calculator and you gave me a decimal, I would know. So average value. I think the last two maybe on your homework were this. Um, what about the first ones? They always throw people because it gives you um, pictures and they say appeal to the geometry of the figure. Did you get those? Just you and Sawyer. they give you this lovely equation, but they also give you a graph, and I'm going to be very, very sketchy <laughs> with my graph, um, but you can look in the, the book to get a better picture. Sometimes I just track this book out. We're losing them very quickly. I was going to say, every time you come back, we've done really important stuff, and you haven't been here for it.
so look at the directions though. The directions say find the average value. Hey, that's what we just did. One over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x d of x. But it says without integrating by appealing to the geometry of the region between the graph and the axis. Because remember, when you see this here, that is the area under the curve. So whenever you can use geometry to find the area, you don't have to actually integrate it. And sometimes they don't even give you the equation to integrate it because they want you to use geometry. And so even though we learned yesterday that we could do the f of b minus f of a and work it out, sometimes you're going to do the geometry because this is a this is a piecewise function and I don't want to integrate both sections of that piecewise function and because that's going to be a mess and a half to do. f of b minus f of a. Yeah, I think you had to fill it in the blanks there. I don't think it's on there. So the the difference is I want not just the area, I want the average value. So I'm going to say 1 over b minus a, so 2 minus negative 4. And instead of integrating, I'm just going to do the area. And that's just a triangle, yes? So this is my base. This is my height. So is that a base of 6 and a height of 3? If they asked you to find the actual value of the integral, it would just be this blue part, but the directions say average value. So you have to do the 1 over b minus a. What is that? 1, 6 times half of 6 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Is that right? 9 over 6 is 3 over 2. Yes, sir. So this one makes you think about, hmm, do I remember what the graph of tangent looks like? From negative pi fourths to pi fourths? When I put it on my calculator, well, your students already calculated. What? Oh, your graph already calculated? Yeah, like it. Weird. Did you change your bounds to negative pi fourths to pi fourths? Yeah, and then it looked even weirder. And so I was like, I'm done. Um, what happens if I plug in zero? What's the tangent of zero? Mm. Tangent is y over x, and at zero, y zero. <coughs> it's great that they give you the bounds of pi fourths to pi fourths, negative pi fourths to pi fourths, because pi fourths is the best one to do tangent with, right? What is the tangent of pi fourths? One. What is the tangent of negative pi fourths? If you remember, um, if this didn't stop here, it would make those kind of S shapes. I call them S shapes, right? Like it just keeps repeating itself. Any memories of that function calculation? Oh, maybe that's what it was. I thought it was supposed to be nonlinear. It's like this. That's what's supposed to be getting to me. So if I find the area of this. Something like that, right? That doesn't look like a geometric shape, huh? It's not a triangle. Do you agree with me on that? It's not two triangles. Because it's curvy, right? Right. It's supposed to be curved. Um, but what have we talked about? The area below the x-axis, do you agree that that's going to be negative? And the area above is always going to be positive? We know about these two shapes right here. They're symmetric, right? The tangent is the same above as it is below negative. Um, so I can say by looking at the graph, by appealing to the geometry, that I know that the integral is going to be zero because the area is going to cancel each other out. The negative part is going to cancel out the positive part. So I can say 1 over uh, pi fourth minus negative pi fourth times the integral tangent theta d theta has to equal zero. Because the area cancels each other out. 
If it didn't cancel each other out, we don't know how to do that yet. And we could do Riemann sums and get an approximation, but yeah. Because we don't know the integral of tangent, right? Like there's no trig function whose derivative is tangent, right? So to, to take the integral of that's kind of crazy. We won't learn that until chapter six. Which who knows when that'll be, because we're never going to be at school again on the time. So. That's right. I've already had some issues in the hallway this morning. How about this? Next Tuesday, Mr. Wildman's in the email. Hey, next Tuesday's midterms. What? Next Tuesday, turn off the midterms. Wait, I didn't have a test. Not even close to having a test. Here's your midterm. you the inverse tangent is the one that I think you should know the most. Um, but on number 28, they give you something like the integral from 1 over the square root of like 1 minus x squared plus x. We don't know how to do anything with that unless it just matches with the formula. And so you should be able to say for inverse sine is when you just have a square root of something squared minus something squared, x squared. Inverse tangent is when there's no square root. And inverse secant and cosecant is crazy weird because you have the number on the outside with the square root. And so 28 does match up with uh, inverse sine where a would be 1 and x would just be x. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't say this yesterday, but remember that the c inverse functions like cosecant, cosine, and cotangent, they're just the negative of this. So it would just be like having a negative in front of each one of these. Since the C value start with C. You can watch that my trig video again. C C means a negative. That's what that says, that guy says something. So like in uh, inverse cosine would just be a negative value. But usually these are what show up. So yeah, twenty eight. Am I gonna put inverse sine, inverse secant on a test? No. Inverse tangent? Yes. Because that shows up on the AP test. Okay. Um, because it's very easily mixed up with LN. And so that's why they put that because it makes people get confused of is it LN or is it inverse tangent? I don't know. So that's why it's there. You will. Um, I have a worksheet for you. We are going to have a quiz on Monday over 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3. I have your 5.1 and 5.2 worksheets and homework quizzes up here that I'm going to pass back to you. So this worksheet is just over 5.3, day one and day two. So the front half, for the most part, is um, 
day one stuff where you're using the properties. But then look at number five. Number five is like what we just did, right? It says by appealing to the geometry. So you use the area formula. And then on the back, seven through 15, you should not be using the button on your calculator. You should be doing the f of b minus f of a. And 12 through 15 is average value, but you still do 1 over b minus a, and then you actually work it out. So I'm okay if you want to check it on your calculator, but these are the ones I expect you to be able to do by hand without a calculator. We will have a no calculator and a calculator part of this quiz. We'll see if we do both parts on Monday or not. Um, I'm sure we'll have two hours but uh, the plan is that we'll be doing this. If you have a question on this or any of the work, make sure you contact me this weekend. You can email me. You can text me. Uh, you don't have my number now. Put it in your phone, especially we're going to be seeing not very much each other, and I'm still going to be expecting you to be tracking it, so, you know, we'll become buddies, and I'll be answering back your questions. So, study this stuff. I don't even ask who you are when you text me. Like, I love when, I, I, it's my favorite when people don't tell me who it is, because it's like, it's a fun.